Hi Bakers and welcome back to the Kenwood Kids Club and of course a very happy new year to you all. I do hope you had a really relaxing Christmas break whether you were celebrating or not and you're energised and ready for a whole new year of Bake Alongs with me and our amazing junior ambassadors here in the Kenwood Kids Club. I thought I'd start us off this year with something really, really easy but super delicious and that is my thumbprint cookies. Now you might have heard of these before, they're quite a popular recipe over in America and they are so, so easy to make but I promise you they really are tasty. So I think we should probably give them a go. Now as always if you head down to the video description you will find the full list of ingredients you will need to bake along with me today so feel free to pause the video and go and check them out. Or of course you can click on the link to the Kemo Kids Club website where not only will you find the full list of ingredients but also the full written out recipe method as well. In terms of ingredients, all you're going to need is some butter, some sugar, an egg, some vanilla extract, some flour, some baking powder and some jam. Now I'm using homemade jam today but you don't need to use homemade, you can just use your favourite jar of ready-made jam that you've got in the fridge at home. But if you've got all of those things ready, then I guess we can get started. Now before you even begin, what I'd like you to do is preheat your oven to 180 degrees, which is 160 degrees fan or gas mark 4, and line two large baking trays with some non-stick baking paper. These biscuits or cookies really do like to spread, so the biggest trays you've got would be best for this one. I have made them before on slightly smaller trays and they all kind of join up, which doesn't stop them tasting great, but they don't look quite so pretty. But once you've done that, we can get started on the baking. And to do that, we're going to start by putting our butter, which I'm using salted butter today, but if you've got unsalted butter, that's fine. Just add in a little pinch of salt to the mixture. And then I've got some white caster sugar and that's going into that bowl as well. As always, I've got my favorite creaming beater, but if you don't have one of these, you can just use your K beater. And then that goes onto the mixer. And we're going to mix these together and so they're really pale and smooth. Now of course it is still quite cold at this time of year, so if you find your butter is a little bit hard, what you can do is pop them in the microwave around about 10 to 20 seconds just to soften it up slightly. But if you get it out a good couple of hours before you plan to stop making your thumbprint cookies, you should find it will be soft enough for this part. Now it does take a little while to cream together your butter and sugar, so as always I'm not going to make you watch me do that for the next five minutes. We'll jump ahead until mine is done and I'll show you what you need to do next. Now when it's been mixing for a few minutes, you should find that your mixture has gone really light in colour like this and it's nice and smooth. So I'm just going to grab my trusty spatula and scrape around the bowl just to make sure everything's fully combined together and then we can go in with our next ingredients. Now that means we need one medium egg. If you're worried about dropping shell in, feel free to do this into a separate bowl first. And then I'm also going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now do try and use extract if you can rather than essence because it tastes a lot better. And then all we need to do is mix this again until it's nice and smooth. Now you might find that your ingredients will start to separate a little bit, but that's absolutely fine because in a second we're gonna add the dry ingredients and they'll bring it all back together again. So this one doesn't need to mix for very long at all. I've got my mixer on about a number three, so kind of a low to medium speed. And all I'm looking for it to do is just combine the egg into the butter and sugar mixture. As I say, if it looks like it's splitting or curdling, it's not a problem at all. When we're baking cakes, it's important that we get a really nice, smooth emulsion because we're trapping loads of air in. But for our biscuits, we actually don't need to trap loads of air at all. However, saying that, Mine has come together beautifully today. So again, if I take this off to show you, you can see it's nice and smooth. It's not gone runny at all. So we can now add in our dry ingredients and that is some flour. And I'm using plain flour, no raising agent in this one. But we are going to add half a teaspoon of baking powder and that's the raising agent we're going to use. These are biscuits or cookies rather than a cake. So we don't need them to rise too much. 
and that's why we only need a little bit of baking powder. Now, as I said at the start of the video, don't forget all of these quantities of all the ingredients that you'll need are down in the video description. So, if you would like to bake along with me, just head down there and you'll find them all. Now, starting on a really low speed this time, just so the flour doesn't go whoosh everywhere, I'm going to mix in the dry ingredients into those wet ingredients, and you should end up with a really kind of thick but smooth dough. Now, once it's started to come together, I'm going to turn it back up to number three. But again, it doesn't take very long. So we're not going to jump ahead this time because as soon as it's come together and you can see it's pulling off the side of the bowl there, that means we're done. And we end up with this really thick, smooth biscuit dough. So I'm going to scrape off my beater. I'm just using my fingers because we're going to be using our fingers a lot. We can get rid of this now. When you get to this stage, it's time for your two large baking trays. And as I say, these ones are huge. They're probably the biggest ones I've got. And what we're going to do is using our hands, we're going to roll little balls of our biscuit mixture. So it's really important if you haven't already done it to make sure you've washed your hands because otherwise you could be putting germs into your biscuits. Nobody wants germy biscuits. So your, your balls that you're rolling need to be roughly the size of a large sprout as we've just finished Christmas, so hopefully that makes sense. And don't forget these are going to spread, so we do need to give them a little bit of room to do that so they don't all end up joined together like my last ones did. So we'll see how many we can roll first of all and then I'll try and space them out evenly on the baking trays. So I've managed to roll about 19 balls out of my mixture, so I'm going to split them so I've got 10 on one tray and 9 on the other one. So this one's slightly bigger I think, so we'll put the 10 on here. And then we'll leave the 9 on this one. Okay, now comes the important part because these are thumbprint biscuits or thumbprint cookies. And so what we do now is we use our thumb to make a little hole in the middle of each one of our biscuits. Now I've got quite warm hands and so I find that my hands can get quite sticky doing this. So if you, you find that that happens to you too, I've got a top tip for you. Grab a tiny bit more flour and just dip the tip of your thumb into it between each one. And then when you come to push your hole into the middle of your cookies, will help you make sure you don't end up really sticky and messy. So we need to do that for all 19 of these, so it might take me a little while. And then when you've done that, your last job for now is going to be to grab your jam. And you'll see that I've put mine in a piping bag. You don't have to do this if you don't have piping bags at home. You can just spoon about half a teaspoon of jam into each one of those holes that you've made. But I find a piping bag stops me getting quite so messy. So I'm just gonna snip the tip off there. And then, as I say, about half a teaspoon into each hole. And you should end up with something that looks like this. Now these need to go into that preheated oven for around about 12 to 15 minutes, although I'll be honest, I tend to go for the full 15 minutes. You just want them to be starting to color around the outside. So not quite golden brown, but not as pale as they are now. So I'm going to pop these into the oven and then we'll jump ahead until they're baked so you can see what they should look like. And after only 15 minutes, hopefully you can see that these have started to turn kind of a very slight golden colour around the edges. In fact, I'm going to bring them a little bit closer to the camera so that you can see the colour just starting to appear around the edges. And don't panic, I have got another memory card now. So hopefully from next week we'll be back to two camera angles in my videos. It's been ages. Now these will be really, really soft when they come out of the oven, like most of our biscuits and cookie recipes. If I try and touch these now, they feel really, really soft. So obviously, 
we're not going to try one of these just yet. But luckily, I've got some that I prepared earlier. And so once they've cooled down completely, they'll go nice and crisp and they're almost like a kind of a crumbly sugar cookie. And then of course you've got that little pocket of jam in the middle and they're just so simple and delicious. Now I'm not gonna make you watch me eat a whole cookie because that would be a bit weird. But if you fancy giving my thumbprint cookies a go, then as I said earlier on, you will find the full list of ingredients that you need to bake along with me down in the video description. Or of course, you can head over to the Kenwood Kids Club website. You'll also find the link for that in the video description too. And over there, you'll find the full recipe, including the written out method as well. While you're at the Kenwood Kids Club website, if you haven't already signed up to become a member, make sure you do that. Not only will you get your own Kenwood Kids Club membership card, which is very cool, and it has my face on it, but also you will be eligible to enter our Star Baker of the Month competition. Every single month, we choose a Star Baker from somebody who's baked along with one of our recipes. Doesn't have to be the latest one, by the way. Any one of the recipes over on our website, and we have hundreds now. Yes, we choose one of those people to be our Star Baker of the Month and they'll receive their very own Kenwood Kids Club goodie bag and their own Kenwood hand mixer as well, which is a fantastic prize if you're really getting into your baking. Now, I do hope that you will give this recipe a try because as you just saw, it is so, so simple to make and yet they are utterly delicious. So I know that you are going to love them. If you do have a go at them, as well as entering them into the Kemo Kids Club Star Baker of the Month competition, why not tag me on social media as well? You'll find me at, at Mr. Baker's Cake School on Facebook and on Instagram, and I would love to see what you've been baking at home. Similarly, if you've been doing some other baking at home, why not tag us as well? We'd love to see it. So at Mr. Baker's Cake School and of course at Kenwood World. I'll be back at the same time next week with another bake along for you to enjoy. But until then, as always, take care and happy baking.